Welcome to the Dragon's Library, a podcast where I, the Dragon, talk about all the media I enjoy, past and present. If you like this podcast, please subscribe. So far in the Dragon's Library's premiere, we've done a video game and a book. I think we should round out with a TV show and a movie this week. So uh, we're going to have two episodes this week. Uh, this Today's episode is going to be all about a TV show, WandaVision, and on Friday... I'm going to have another podcast released about Raya and the Last Dragon, a movie that's come out recently. You might know that both these are Disney things, but Disney owns everything now, so, you know, it's not really a choice as much as it is just, well, that's what's releasing, so let's have some fun with it. Uh, all right, so to start off, um, for those of you who don't know, um, which I guess is the minority probably for a show like this, <laughs> uh, WandaVision is a spinoff of the Avengers movies, so... Uh, it's a direct sequel, actually, to Infinity War and Endgame. So, in Infinity War, Vision, the robot with the Mind Stone in his head, got it ripped out and died. And his lover-slash-wife, because I think they were officially married, they said they were apparently got married during the two years they were in hiding, uh, went crazy, went, like, completely nuts after, she, you know, he died, because Thanos basically just ruined everything. Um, <laughs> and so... Wanda was in a really bad state. Uh, during and Immediately after she lost Vision, she was like blinked out of existence for a few years. And so she wakes up for Endgame uh, near the end so that she can find the big battle and tries to basically destroy Thanos. And she nearly kills him you know, if it weren't for him literally raining down fire from their giant warship to stop her. Which was just like, she just lifted him up and was like, you took it from me. And was like, I don't even know you. She, she was just pissed. Uh, so that's what happened there. So basically, this show picks up uh, in Minas Tirith. So basically, all of a sudden, we're in a black and white sitcom, uh, sto- basically uh, based on the Dick Van Dyke show. One of the really cool things about this show is that each episode for the first few is going to uh, mimic a sitcom, and each one is like a picture perfect recreation of a classic sitcom. So the first episode is the Dick Van Dyke show, um, and it's all this black and white and you know, Wanda and Vision are just, you know, coming into this new suburban home. It's like, uh, wasn't he dead? It's like, yeah, he was dead. Uh, I just want to see where this goes. Uh, the next episode is Bewitched. And th- the first huge episode, they're just kind of getting up to, you know, sitcom hijinks. Oh, there's a talent show they have to do for a charity. Oh, they need the boss is coming over. Uh, and each time, in the middle of doing something, you know, the stuff, the reality will start to just, like, break. So, uh, in the first episode, the... Uh, boss who came over to eat dinner with them starts choking and everybody starts getting really weird out and they're just like, stop it, stop it, stop it, like a glitched video game character. In the second episode, there's like a radio that starts to ask Wanda, who's doing this to you, Wanda? Uh, if you've seen any of the trailers, you've seen like both these scenes before the show even came out. Um, and so the whole idea is that some somehow reality is being altered. Um, the next, the third episode goes for a Brady Bunch version of the sitcom and it ends with this mysterious note because people will start acting even weirder. Vision's starting noticing things are going on. Wanda's acting like cagey, like she might actually know what's happening. Um, and the episode ends with this ki- uh, friend uh, who's been played by the actor who's going to be playing Monica Rambeau. Uh, you might know her as the kid, for the best friend's daughter from Captain Marvel. Uh, she's grown up now. So uh, In the fourth episode, we find out she's a S.W.O.R.D. agent. And S.W.O.R.D. is basically the new S.H.I.E.L.D., uh, from the movies, there's a secret government organization that handles all the paranormal and superhero stuff. Uh, and they're supposed to be specifically handling space and sentient weapons and stuff like that. So, you know, people with powers. Um, and Monica is grounded because she's supposed to be part of their space program, but because she was blipped out of existence with, like Wanda was, uh, she's currently grounded just while she's recovering. You know, you gotta stay down. Um, so she's sent off to investigate these disappearances. Well, it turns out there's this energy field around this town, and anything that goes in doesn't come out. And Monica decides to stick her hand in it because she's a professional, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> she's a professional. She stuck her hand. She's like, uh, we, we sent a drone in there. It didn't come out. Well, it looks like some kind of energy field. Let me stick my hand in it. Monica, that's not safe. Monica, what are you doing? <laughs> uh, that, that whole scene going back is just hilarious. Like, uh, it, it's beautiful. I love it. I, I do. I genuinely love it. Like, 
more than you can imagine. So, um, Sword ends up sending, like, a lot of people to investigate the force fields, find out what's going on, and the whole show is sort of like this sitcom, but stuff's not really right, it's not going right, and then we have the people outside who are, like, watching the episodes, trying to figure out what's going on. It's really cool, though. They actually feel like people that, like, watch episodes frame by frame to dissect the mysteries. Like, they'll have boards, like, why is it Hexagon? Why, uh, here's this person, this is their real-life name and stuff. All right, we need to figure out who each of these people are in the hex. And it feels like they're actually solving a mystery. I had to give it to them. Now, the person in charge, the head of S.W.O.R.D., is definitely hiding something. Uh, eventually, Wanda... Eventually, they manage to get Monica... Monica gets blasted out by Wanda when she figures out somebody's infiltrated the hex because she got drawn in. Um, and basically, Monica finds out that... You know, vision, basically the, what they said is that Vision was stolen by Wanda and that Wanda resurrected him. We think, oh, she brought his body back. She animated him because now she has these reality controlling abilities because of her grief. Uh, her grief triggered these, a massive explosion of power, apparently. Uh, it turns out that's actually, um, well, okay. Spoiler alert from now on. This show is really good. Uh, I think it's really clever. It deserves a lot of praise. Um... The first few episodes are a great, great hook. I do think that if you're introducing this one to the show, you should definitely let them watch the first four episodes because I think um, you need that fourth episode in order to get the hook. If there's one problem I have for it, because I tried to show it my dad, and my dad was like, ah, I'm not sure, I'm not sure. I'll watch three episodes, I'll watch two episodes. And he was like, well, I still don't know what's going on. And like, I'm not, that's fair. Like, by three episodes, you should have a general idea of the plot, but I don't feel like you get the full sense of the plot until the fourth episode when you see things from Monica's perspective, when you see the sword agents finding this place, stuff like that, you get caught up. Um, one thing I could have said to improve the show is probably to make the fourth episode, the third episode, like cut down on the, have this side plot from the third, first, third episode play, um, but cut down or actually, you know, I think the third episode could have just been like the first two episodes and they just didn't see the, the, third, the um, the third episode. So the third episode's uh, Brady Bunch parody, where Monica gets blasted out of the, the hex. I think that should have been the fourth episode, and they should have had the setup and the explanation of what's going on in the second in the third episode. That way, you have that third episode hook um, that helps draw people in. And this is just something I know from my own parents. Maybe some people disagree. I definitely think that having the uh, explanation episode end with the uh, alternate version of Monica getting blasted out because we saw that Monica just got dis like. Vision was like, uh, something's wrong. This woman, nobody seems to know who she is. And then he goes into Wanda, he's like, Wanda, something's wrong. It's like, where, wait, where is she? It's like, oh, she went home, honey. And we just don't know what happened to her for, like, a whole episode. As we're learning about her, which was really good. I actually really liked the fourth episode and the way it's set up. But I think that it being as a third episode would have helped hook the show a bit better for some other people who weren't as into it, like my parents. Um, again, maybe that's just them. I loved it regardless. Uh, and fun fact, if you're a big into like sitcoms, you will get a kick out of this show because they like perfectly replicate the sets and shots of these sitcoms. Like to the point where we'll be able to hear, that's the couch, that's the toaster, that's the sheet, those are the counters. Hey, that's the same camera angle they use. Like they go all in on replicating the sitcom. It's really cool. Um, so the show's great. Really good uh, story. I'm not going to spoil and all in all, highly recommend. Now, from here on out, I'll be talking about the later episodes, past episode four and five. Um, this will be heavily spoilers, so I'll be talking about a few things that will be, you know, surprises and even uh, the ending of the show. So, if you haven't watched it, go ahead and watch it. If you have and just want to hear my thoughts on it, you can keep listening. All right, now that all the people who had to leave are gone... I love this show so much. The ending was wonderful. Um, so basically, it, we, we all know what happens, but I'll explain for the people who kept listening anyway, despite me telling them they should watch the show first. I know who you are, because I was you, and basically every time I've ever watched one of these. God, what am I doing? Uh, anyway, uh, there was a nosy neighbor named Agnes who was actually Agatha Harkness, and she's a witch. Because Wanda, spoiler alert, is a witch. And uh, that's her powers. Her powers are actually just magic. Go figure. Uh, oh, right. Everyone who ever read the comic or even heard of the comic knew that. And she does get her superhero name. She gets her costume. It's really cool. Um, she actually learns a bit about magic. She actually... One of the cool things is um, 
Agatha initially ex shows herself to um, Wanda by trapping her, basically leading her down to a basement where she's put up these runes. And runes are basically magic where if you uh, set up these runes properly, only the witch who casts the runes can use her magic there. So that's how she traps Wanda and gets, you know, deep into her head so she can figure out what she's doing and how she's doing all this. Because reality warping is a little extreme for someone who's never even used magic consciously before and only ever used it as, like, a basic telekinesis. She's like, how did you do this? Like, oh, you're, you know, I need to look into your past, figure out what happened. So, um, the ending, actually, is where Wanda ends up forming the runes on the side of the hex, the barrier that's keeping this reality together, and basically turns off Agnes's power while she's inside. And I thought that was really cool. Um, I really like Wanda's kids, especially that heart-wrenching scene at the end where she's, like, saying goodnight to them as the hex recedes knowing that once it reaches, not once it completely fades away, this house and her children will die along with her husband. They'll just cease to exist. And it's like, damn, Wanda, you went through some shit. Also, I like that Wanda actually didn't break into the sword facility, because she didn't. Uh, she actually just said goodbye to Vision and was like, you're not there anymore, are you? And just left. And what happened was she went back to this house that Vision had actually apparently picked out for her, either shown her beforehand, or maybe it was like in his will, or something like that. But it was a surprise he was going to spring on her. Uh, a whole place for them to you know, build a family, or at least live a happy life, away from all this Avengers nonsense. And she like has a breakdown. like she, Her powers just go wild and create the Hex. And so she didn't do it on purpose, but she did kind of mind control and you know enslave and mentally torture people. And they do turn that on her in the final battle. Um, I like to think that she wasn't completely cautious for a while. Like, maybe for like the first two episodes, she didn't really know what was going on. But uh, it's very clear by at least the third episode, she was in pretty firm control of what was happening inside the Hex. Um, so, you know, and she's sort of kind of becoming an anti-hero, or maybe even a villain. Uh, we'll definitely be seeing her in Doctor Strange, so that's going to be fun. Uh, I can't wait. I still can't believe they're probably going to be going with that mom pun. If you watch any other shows, you know what I'm talking about. If not, um, Multiverse of Madness is a anagram for mom, so a lot of people think she's going to be trying to use, resurrect her kids, and she's going to be like a villain in that movie. It was very dumb when I kept hearing it online, and now it's probably going to be a thing, and I'm so... I'm just Imagine me just sitting here face-palming. I'm just face-palming. Uh, anyway, so, the big climax to battle at the end. Now, Vision, the Vision we're with, is basically just a construct of Matt Wanda's magic. But the body was being used by S.W.O.R.D., because, spoiler alert, the director is, you know, of course, evil. Um, or at least, you know, the, you, don't, you weren't here. Uh, these our means are justified, you know, that character. It's like, I've been through some shit, you weren't here during it, and we had to do this. This is necessary nowadays. You know, that excuse. Um, so he turned Vision body into sort of like an evil Vision, who's just like pure programming and, you know, doesn't have any of his memories. Uh, and the Visions have like this really cool, uh, because Vision powers, you can phase through things with fire laser, so they have this like intangibility duel where they're like ripping into each other's bodies and stuff like that. And then they get into an argument over who's the real Vision using things like the um, the mythical ship of Theseus. Like it's a philosophical argument. Like if you if you have a ship preserved, the ship of Theseus preserved in a museum, and you're um, slowly taking out the the planks of wood that are the pieces of wood that are rotting and replacing them with new pieces of wood. It once you have replaced every piece of wood that was originally on the ship, is it still the ship of Theseus? So it's basically is the physical vision, who's just the physical parts of vision, vision, or is the vision who has all of vision's memories vision? And they come in, and they basically vision, the vision, the, um, heck, the fake vision Wanda created, restores the physical vision's memories. But it's left ambiguous as to whether he, like, it still ex feels like he experienced them or not. Um, and so yeah, Wanda ends up taking this dark book Agnes had, and the end credits show her flipping through an ancient book of the damned. So uh, I guess she's going to be either be an antagonist or probably causing some problems in Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. I can only see that going badly for her because it's an evil, cursed, magical text. Those generally don't 
help anyone. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. All right, well, that seems to be my time this week. Um, if you guys want to support, just keep coming by. Also, I know that my last video only got one other download aside from myself. So, to that one person who's listening to me out there, thank you. Much respect. Like, seriously, I, I am so happy somebody's listening. <laughs>